All right, welcome to another episode of Paul's Collectibles. It's good to have you. Thanks for joining me. Today we're doing something a little different and something that frankly I've not actually done here on the channel ever before. We're gonna take a room collection tour, studio tour of the Paul's Collectibles high ground as the Hollow Chronicles called it once. I don't really have a name for my studio upstairs. Now this is gonna be quick and to the point because frankly my YouTube studio slash display room is pretty small and obviously it's dual purpose. So there's not a lot to look at, but I've had a lot of setups in this room since I started filming videos probably about three years ago. But right now, this is my most favorite setup. So I also wanted to kind of save it for posterity in case I decided to move things around to see how it used to be. But with that, come on with me upstairs and let's take a look around behind the scenes at Paul's Collectibles. Come on. Okay, here we are, and as you first come through the door and you look to the left, here we have uh, some of my Black Series Trooper figures, which I made shadow boxes out of. And in the middle, we have a signed 501st Clone Trooper. And below that, there's two pictures. Now, you're very quickly gonna see that this room almost looks like a cult of personality because I have a number of signed items, but they've all been signed by the same guy. Adisher Radpour, who was a buddy of mine who was uh, in a couple of the episodes of Book of Boba Fett, and we just had a blast having him sign stuff for us. But let's take a close look at those. Now, of course, the fun thing about filming anything in glass is all the reflectivity, so I'll apologize for that. But up top, you've got what I call my Rogue One Stormtroopers and the variants thereof, and then that's the signed 501st Legion figure from Adisher Radpour, and then over here, this is my evolution of the Clone Wars Troopers right here. And then coming on down, we have Adisher in the scene in Obi-Wan Kenobi where they confronted him on that really desolate planet. And you could totally tell it was Southern California. It was hilarious. And then below that, we have another signed picture from Adisher. This is the underwater fortress. He played one of the stormtroopers in there. And then below that, I have some displays of some figures and some sets. On this first shelf is my Hot Toys Transport Trooper. I have four Hot Toys in this room. And then this is the area I used to display, uh, you know, some stuff that's kind of just recent. And right now I have my Black Series Stormtrooper and my Black Series Biker Scout from the 40th anniversary of Return of the Jedi. Coming on down. And below that I have the Bad Batch special package with the four different types of troopers in there and the biker scout and scout trooper on the right side there and then below that way down at the bottom i have the jedi survivor three pack and the three pack from obi-wan kenobi of figures and these displays are kind of static but they get changed out every now and then and then we move over to the right and over to the right of what I just showed you on this same wall, I have several variations of different versions of the Vintage Collection Troopers over there. That's the Target exclusive retro collection. What do you call those? The prototypes. There's the Stormtrooper Commander. There's the Rebel dressed up as a biker scout. And then down below him, I have the standard Stormtrooper that was recently released on card from Star Wars. The Scout Trooper that comes in that Scout Trooper bike, because I got two of them. There's the Rogue One Stormtrooper, and then we have the Artillery Stormtrooper next to him. And then on that same shelf, I've got the Remnant Stormtrooper. And then coming on down, I've got some more Black Series and a couple of loose items. And below those troopers, I have a loose Scout bike. He was with, or that bike was with the figure that you saw up above. And I have a loose Mandalorian female figure. I forgot her name, but she's one of the ones that I got from Star Action Figures that got crushed. So I unpackaged her and that's where she lives now. And then down below, oh, you can see my reflection. <laughs> down below, you can see what I have, I call the Rogues from the Mandalorian show. And then my Empire Strikes Back three pack of Stormtroopers. And then below that, I've got a little filing cabinet and some lighting I'll show you. So below the Black Series 
shadow box, as you can see, and we'll get over to the desk in a second. I have this red tinged light that is attached to the desk that when I'm filming, lights up the left side of my face to give my shots a little bit of character and to put a little color into my face. And then if we come on down below that, this is my two drawer file cabinet. This is what sits on the top of it. Those are my headphones. That is simply a banana hanger. You're supposed to hang bananas on it, but it works great for headphones. And in the background is this great flat Stanley project of a stormtrooper that my wife did for me. This is called the Travels and Adventures of Stormtrooper PT5895. She did that for me and coordinated with all of my friends all over the United States and at work to get pictures with this stormtrooper that she then had put into this book. And it's amazing. And then I have two of these coasters. These are kind of weighty, so they hold the banana hanger in place. And then I have the remote control for the lights behind me. Coming on down, I'll show you some quick magnets I have. Now on this drawer are four magnets. On the left over here are two real magnets that I've purchased over the years. One's the helmet and one's the power of the four stormtrooper. This is a rank plaque that I bought from a company, but then I found a company called Bailey's Builds that I actually like a lot better. And down here are a couple of magnets I made myself. This is just a vintage collection, remnant stormtrooper. And then I glued a rare earth magnet on his back and I glued his gun in his hand and it goes right there. Cause I don't never know what to do with these guys when I open them. And I did the same thing with this Bill Burr transport trooper. Just got a rare magnet on the back and it sticks right to the file cabinet like that. Now let's take a look where I do a lot of my filming and live streaming. Okay, so most of my videos actually start off with me in a talking headshot is what that's called. And what I have here is a pole light that has a remote control down below and I'll show you in a second. And then I have my Canon camera, which is attached with these really nice hooks. And then below that, I have what's called a key light. So this top one is called a key light and this bottom was a secondary key light so that the shadows that the top one creates are actually erased somewhat from the one that's in the middle. And those are all USB. Behind the monitor, I have a USB tower that has a lot of power. And then I have my laptop and a secondary monitor, which makes it so easy when I'm trying to edit videos and when I'm trying to live stream because I can pick up things, but also still run the live stream. And then down below, I have this great pullout drawer. And here is the remote for the light. You'll see it actually works as turns off and on and can change the, um, the intensity of the light. And then I have a little USB slash 110 plug here in case I need some power right up here on the desk. And then I keep a towel here to clean off lenses and things at all time, a microfiber towel. And that just slides in. And then this light back here, which is kind of hard to see, it just is USB plugged into the tower back there. And I use it when the rest of the room is dark so I can see what's going on on the desk. And when I'm at my desk, this is convenient. I love those little phone stands like that. Works out great. And then below all that in the deep dark recesses below is my sign to Joe Montana, San Francisco 49ers helmet and this great Star Wars book. It's a complete visual dictionary that I've had for quite a while. I think my daughter gave it to me as a gift and I love it. Okay, and then coming over from the desk to the wall to the right of the desk, up top here I have three variations of the Stormtrooper in Black Series in a shadow box and then two more pictures of Artisher below that where he signed where he played in the uh, Book of Boba Fett, one of those Clatoonians, and then down below he played the 501st Troopers that came in and executed Order 66. And of course everything's reflecting off the glass, but there's a slightly better look at the Clatoonian Raider picture and a slightly better look at the 501st Legion Trooper picture. And then to the right of that, I have a shelf hanging that has two more of my hot toys. We have the Stormtrooper Commander from the Mandalorian over here. And then we have the Artillery Trooper, which turns out to be one of my favorite decos from the Mandalorian right there. And then in the middle, I did a video on these guys. These are the Hear No Evil, See No Evil, Speak No Evil Stormtroopers that Bailey, my partner in crime, got me for Christmas one year. And they're displayed right there. And then as we come further down, these have always shown up in my helmet videos, or at least they showed up in the last three, or the last video. So that's my clone wall below them. And they are on studio monitor stands, believe it or not. So these two are on the right are on studio monitor stands. I used to record music up here and those were the, where the studio monitors went, but they make great helmet displays. And then over here to the left, 
I have this great dual pane plastic, or excuse me, glass table with uh, metal inlays and things. And down below, I keep a picture of my brother, uh, a project called Cold Castle. He did a really long time ago and his hat, Il Al, because my brother does most of the music, or at least did most of the music that I use on my YouTube channel. So that's my little homage to him down there. And then if we come further to the right, this is my transport trooper costume that I have built onto a mannequin to make a statue. And I filmed a video about that if you're interested, but I really like that. And so he sits in the corner over there. And then next to him on the next wall is the most familiar part of my YouTube studio slash display room. And that is my helmet collection, which I'm not gonna go into great detail here because I do a yearly video on this collection and I just published one about two weeks ago. So check that out if you'd like more information on these glass cases and these helmets. I'm pretty proud of the collection though, it's pretty cool. And then moving on from the helmet collection, we have the last wall in this room. And over here I have what I call my empire tower. And we'll go kind of top to bottom on him and hit the things on the side as we go. So on the top shelf, I talk about this often in my helmet videos as well. This is a mannequin head that has my imperial hat, belt, and rank plaque. This one is kind of silly because it's really rubbery and stuff like that. So it doesn't go on any of my costumes. It just gets displayed there because it looks cool. And behind it is a framed print of the scene that changed my life, 1977. Star Wars wasn't called a new hope then when those stormtroopers busted in I was hooked and have been a Star Wars fan ever since got to see that in the theater when I was a little kid I believe I was seven years old at the time and so that right there just kind of takes me back So I display that prominently on the wall behind the Empire Tower Below that we have my Imperial Handbook which was gifted to me very generously by a longtime viewer of my channel named Michael Hendrickson So that gets displayed there. That's a great book over here are some of the Imperial credits that you can get from Disney and the Imperial medal that you can get that we see Werner Herzog wearing in The Mandalorian. And those were both gifted to me by my buddy Casey, who I've talked about several times on this channel. He's a great Star Wars fan, member of the 501st in Southern California as well. And to the right of that is my last hot toy. And this of course is the Shore Trooper. I think that's the Shore Trooper standard, not the Commander or anything. And he is actually displayed on what is supposed to be a surround sound speaker stand, but it works great to display him. So he gets a, a piece of, or a place of honor, excuse me, right there next to the Empire Tower. Coming on down below that is the Vintage Collection Clone Wars 501st Clone Trooper that Anisher signed for me <laughs> once again. This is just like a, a glass piggy bank or something like that that I display there of a Stormtrooper helmet. And this is the Star Wars Celebration 2022 Imperial um, 501st Legion 1st Imperial Stormtrooper Detachment patch that they had made. And my buddy Artisher and KC were nice enough to give to me. On the shelf below that, I have my Imperial Prisoner Transport Paul Taylor placard that Casey was holding for me when I arrived in LA. So I would jokingly know who he was. And if you watched the Stormtrooper video that I did where I went out and filmed those guys Halloween two years ago, you'll see him at the beginning of the video holding that. And he was just gracious enough to gift it to me. Down here is one of my prized possessions. This is a vintage Boba Fett that was absolutely demolished. And my buddy Luke over at Reynolds Reviews, he actually meticulously rehabbed that thing, painted it, fixed all the errors and everything like that, and showcased his efforts in a video. And I jokingly commented, hey, if you decide to get rid of that, I'll buy it off of you. And he was absolutely nice enough to send it to me. I was absolutely blown away. So it's been mounted onto a capsule and displayed there under plastic where it'll be nice and safe. And over to the left, that is the Death Trooper Star Wars Space Punch. And not super exciting, but I like it for two reasons. Number one, I'm a huge Death Trooper fan. But number two, I was in France probably five or six years ago now and found it and managed to get it back without it getting demolished. And then on the shelf below that, this is what I call the Maker's Shelf. This is the Paz Vizsla John Favreau figure that was a Star Wars exclusive. And then the George Lucas and Stormtrooper disguise figure now. I just gotta get maybe Dave Filoni as a figure as well, and then I'll have the makers. And then behind that is a framed picture of some 501st Stormtroopers, excuse me, First Order Stormtroopers that was gifted to me. And then over here, a wooden placard of a Stormtrooper helmet. And they just live down there to kind of try to camouflage some of the cords in the background of my videos. There's the base of this guy's mount. All right, let's check out the last wall to the right here. 
Okay, this is the guy I'm not gonna to talk too much about either because he shows up in all my helmet videos, but this is my Sideshow Collectibles full-size, life-size Stormtrooper, and they call it the life-size action figure, which is hilarious. <laughs> but he resides right there in front of the closet. And behind him, you can see that I have a 501st Stormtrooper Imperial flag covering the doorway to get into the closet, so it's much more appealing in the background of my videos. To the right of him on the wall is a shadow box of eight vintage Star Wars figures that my buddy found in his garage that he had played with when he was a little kid. And he brought them over and graciously donated them to the channel. So I cleaned them all up as best I could. As you can see, none of them have their accessories or capes or weapons, but I was just so excited. And they make a great addition and a great decoration. And then above that, there's a Luminara Unduli that my wife picked up for me at Target and the card was all torn up, so I opened it up. And part of those original sets of figures, or that original set of figures on here was a Yoda with no cape and no snake or anything like that but I couldn't figure out a way to get him into the shadow box so he gets to stand up top and guard everything from up there and then below that is this really cool mock-up of a US patent for the stormtrooper helmet it looks like it's a schematic of the inside of the helmet and the apparatus uh, dated January 20th 1980 it says designated patent 455,987 and that was a gift from my daughter which I cherish and so it gets hung there and displayed right below the vintage figures and then last but not least this is the back of the door and I have a Paul's collectibles zip up hoodie sweatshirt that never gets worn because it's so hot here all the time. As a matter of fact, it's 116, which is why I have more time to film videos and stay in the house because I'm not going outside in 116, 117 degrees Fahrenheit. And then I've got a couple of hats up there that I tend to wear in my videos. Now, I showed you some of my vintage figures over here and you may be asking yourself, Paul, I've seen you open tons of vintage figures. Where do you keep those? Well, they're in this closet here and then this is about one quarter of them and the rest are in all plastic totes down below as well. And then finally, this is where I keep all of my helmet boxes above the cabinetry in the garage. But there you have it, just a quick tour of the Paul's Collectibles YouTube studio and display room. I just have a few choice things out because I just don't have the room and I'm also like, I don't like a lot of clutter. I just have a lot of respect for people that can display all their stuff, but it just doesn't seem to work for me. So I display a very few of the number of collectibles that I have. But I really appreciate you joining me. It's been great having you along on the tour. And if you're not a subscriber to the channel, maybe consider doing that for me. That's a great way to support my efforts here at Paul's Collectibles. And if you're already a subscriber or somebody who has been watching my videos for a really long time, you know I greatly appreciate it. But with that, I'll see you on the next video.